Hi everyone and welcome to episode 4 of the Tony Nyhouse uh, 25 inch bolts uh, EDF jet that I'm building. Basically building this from um, scratch kind of thing. I've bought a wood pack. Uh, it's not, not a kit, it's just uh, got the wood in and, and the parts cut out with a, with a laser. Uh, and building this from plan. And um, last episode we got the fuselage construction uh, sorted. Uh, today's episode is basically going to be all about getting this fuselage finished and shaped up, um, including this is going to be the nose, the the nose of the uh, the nap that's going to go on here. So I've got a lot of shaping and carving, but I'm really looking forward to this because I think it's really going to uh, start coming together and start looking um, like a a plane rather than a, a boat, which it looks a bit like now. Um, so if you're into all things uh, fixed wing, EDF, Bolsa, Nitro, a um, little bit of FPV and flying wings as well, uh, then you're going to want to subscribe to my channel. So if this is the first time you come across the channel, please hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you enjoy the video and you want to support my channel, then uh, please uh, hit the like button as well, because that really helps me out on YouTube. Um, and if you want to follow me along, this is, there's going to be quite a few episodes of me building this. Hit that bell icon and then you'll get uh, the notifications when I release a new video. So um, that's enough of that. Let's get stuck in. Right then, guys. Well, as I said on the intro there, um, this video is about getting the top and bottom sheeting on, nose block and shaping. So they're the three main things that we need to get done uh, on this particular episode. Um, and to sheet the top and bottom, we're using this five mil sheet, um, which basically just goes over the top like that and bends bends over. Um, unusual because normally uh, when you, well, from my past experience anyway, which again is a long time ago, but usually you sheet the top and bottom of the fuselage with cross grain like this, which adds quite a lot of strength. Um, but uh, I've checked the build photograph log and I've zoomed in on it and double checked it and it definitely is lengthways like this so that's how I'm going to do it as well. Um, it does make it a lot quicker obviously just putting one sheet on like that. So I've already trimmed this down for the top side here and then for the nose block what I've got to do is to just show you on the plan Uh, so you can see the nose profile there, that's the side profile. I've actually got a, I'm going to trace that onto um, a bit of paper uh, and then um, cut, put that onto a piece of uh, bolsa so I can, uh, and then you build it up, you sort of laminate it together. That's the top of it there, you can see. And what they've used is some of the scrap from the wings, which is 6.5mm bolsa sheet. Um, so this is only a small piece of scrap here, but I have got um, a larger bit, oh, quite a lot actually, in the in the box. But you can see even that piece there is going to be ideal for the. That's going to that's going to work there for that piece. So I think what I'll do is use this piece here as my uh, starter, and uh, as I say, trace around that, cut it out on a piece of paper, then stick that on here, and I can get that cut out, and that will be that will make the middle. Of my um, of my bolts block, and then I'll build the the other bits on the the right hand side and the left hand side just to build it out, uh, and then I can cut down to that profile basically, or sand down to that profile. So that's what we need to do for the nose block. Um, uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this top sheet glued on. Uh, and I'm actually going to use some wood glue for this. I'm not going to use CA because CA, this has got to bend a fair bit. Uh, and CA is quite, well, it's very brittle. So I think it might be better to use um, a bit of this. Uh, so I'm going to use that and then I'm going to get the top sheet on first and then I'm going to just get some masking tape because um, I don't think pins are going to hold it, to be honest, because it's, it's quite a curve. And although this is quite a nice soft bolt, so obviously it's what they've supplied in the kit. Um, it will sort of just spring up and I've got a feeling that I'll probably get get back after I've left it overnight and it will have sprung up from the pins. So fairly straightforward job hopefully. Um, that course is just running some wood glue along here and along there and then we'll get this 
laid on like that and taped up. So we'll get stuck into that now. Right then guys, that's got that top section on. Um, so as you can see, just use some masking tape, some good quality masking tape just to hold that in place. Uh, and then need to leave that to dry overnight now with it being wood glue, where well, that should give us a nice strong hold there. Um, the front, I've actually, as you can see there, just sort of clamped it down. And I also had a bit of an issue with um, this former at the front here because um, it uh, it actually came it sprang open so obviously didn't put enough CA on that maybe and I've sanded it down a little bit since I first glued it so while I've got the wood glue out I've just um, put some fresh wood glue around there and then just clamped it in place with this clamp um, and then on the top here I've just got this pushed down with this this clamp here because uh, obviously this front section is is the um, the springiest bit. This has got the most resistance, if you like. Um, so it needs a good firm hold on there. I don't want that to come off. Um, also, yeah, apologies. There's a little bit of buzzing on that first section. I forgot to unplug the charger from my camera, and it does interfere with the microphone a little bit. So sorry about that. Um, well, hopefully we won't have that problem as we go through the video. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it overnight now, and then um, next clip will be, well, basically, um, I've got to then put the bottom sheet on. There's probably no point in me filming that because it's exactly the same process as the top. Um, so just cut, cut that to size. Obviously, once this is all dry, I'll take all the tape off, then do the exact same thing, glue the bottom on, secure it in place with the tape, and then just leave that one to dry as well um, overnight, or several hours at least. So, um, next clip will be you'll see that i've got the front and bottom sheeting in place glued in place and uh, all the tape and everything off it 
Um, so I'll get that, all that sorted. Obviously that's going to take me a couple of days, but for you it'll be a few seconds. So uh, see you in a second. Okay, so a couple of days later, back in the workshop, got myself a uh, nice cup of organic mint tea, no less. Trying to cut down on the caffeine in the evenings, you see. Mm. And you'll see that we've got this top sheet nicely glued on. I've literally just taken the uh, masking tape off, so that's really nice and secure. Nicely shaped over the fuselage, so pleased with that. Uh, clamped it at the front, clamped it at the back, and then just wrapped tape around, as I think you saw in the previous clip. Uh, it's been a couple of days since that clip, so you do sometimes forget where you got to. Um, so, next job is, I was going to just get this glued on. In fact, you know, I was going to get this glued on um, probably yesterday to leave this, because I wasn't going to bother filming this, because you'd already seen the other one. Uh, but I reread the instructions, luckily, and it mentions to fit the con uh, control linkages, basically, for the elevator, which the snakes come, I'm guessing they come out of here. I need to refer to the plan to have a look at that. But either way, the servo is going to sit in here. Uh, and there's some slots cut out in this former here that the fans attached to for the snake to run through and then they go out and split off to the elevators. Now what it says in the instructions is to use 3mm orange tubes from Formax or Slec and 20 SWG piano wires, what they use for the push rods. But what I've bought, just had a little delivery from Slec actually, and they do this because I really like to try and use snake wherever I can rather than just outer and, and piano wire. So they do this really nice little um, sort of mini snake and push rod setup. So it's three mils on the outer um, and then two mils on the inner. And you know, that's really nice and smooth running. And then all they do at the end is they get one of these little fasteners, which you normally use for, um, you know, you solder that usually onto like the braided wire or whatever, but they've, they've, they've just CA'd this or epoxied it in and then just put a standard clevis on. So that's just a two mil uh, threaded end piece there. And that makes a really nice setup, I think, a bit nicer than just using a bit of piano wire in a tube. And then we also just got a couple of extra bits. So I bought a couple more of these so I can make up the other ends because you actually only get one They've only done one for you, so a couple more of those uh, and then some a couple of clevises to go with, which I'm pretty sure I'd already got, but these things, they're so cheap, they're like two quid or something. And then I've bought a couple of packs of these. Uh, again, these are two mil threaded uh, ball joints and these are to go on the servo ends. And again, I thought these would just be a bit nicer than doing like a Z bend in the... Um, in the piano wire, um, they'll go on the, the servo arm and it'll be a bit more of a secure fitting and allow a little bit of movement. So we've got those bits. So let's have a quick look at the plan. And see if we can see where it says, here we go. So it basically just says they come out here. Um, it's very difficult to see actually on the plan. It looks like they literally just come out No, they can't come out there. That's the bottom, isn't it? So I think they literally just come out here by the looks of things. Uh, doesn't actually say on either the instructions. It does say here, so it's a three mil snake outer. And you can see there, 
where it comes out. So if I sort of line that up there, it's kind of coming out here, somewhere around here. Um, probably could come out a little bit further on because as long as it comes out before the you get to the end of the tailplane that's going to be okay so I reckon about here so what I might do is just drill a three mil hole one there one there just to feed the snake through so it will just go over the top of the thrust tube and just stick out there and there like that so yeah I'll just get that measured up and get that drilled. I think I'll just use my little pin vise, don't really need to bother with an electric drill. Um, so let me just double check that against the plan again and just mark it up. So tail planes, so I, I reckon if we bring the snakes out about here that should be absolutely fine. So it's more or less where those two notches are in the triangle. And then if we just measure down, that's about pretty much 10 mils there. So if I measure five mils there, and then five mils there, That's where we want our holes for the snake to come out. Right, so that's that one drilled. It's a nice tight fit actually. Leave myself plenty of room. That should be more than enough. Again, let me just double check on the plan. Probably just pull a little bit more through just to be on the safe side. But that should be plenty. Well, the servos probably sit about here, so that's fine. And if we just snip that off, probably that's more than enough. Let's just see. Hopefully that will still be nice and smooth. So if that's going to go in there like that, that's kind of going to go around there. Like that, let's say. Should be fine. There's a little bit of resistance there, but you can probably um, just put a little bit of WD-40 inside there to ease that up. And it is crimped a bit at the end where I've um, just cut it, so that should be fine. So let's do the same with this one then. So we're going to get that one in here. going to go like that basically. So now we've got those installed we can uh, I'll just uh, glue those into place. Um, might need to just try and file that out a little bit actually. Oh no it'll just it just clips in quite nicely there actually yeah that's lovely. It does say that these are three mil so that's uh, that's spot on there. Um, so I'll just put a little bit of CA just to, to lock those in uh, and let's just trim this as well a little bit. But now I've done that I can get this top bit plated um, and then once we've done that we'll move on to sorting out the nose cone. And basically in order to do the nose we've got a couple of Profile. So we've got a top-down profile like that, and as you can see, it's made of sandwiched pieces together of 6.5 mil bolts. Sir. And I've had a few comments, by the way, on one of my um, the uh, wing video of this. People saying there's no such thing as 6.5 mil bolts. Well, 
that's what it says on this plan. And also that's what select sell it as, but I think most people know it as six mil and it is same as quarter inch bolster as well. So we've got a top down view like that. And then we've got a side profile like that. So I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna trace around this side profile and then cut that out on a piece of paper. And then I'm gonna stick that to the side of a piece of the uh, quarter inch bolster uh, cut it roughly to size um, and then just layer that up next to each other and then obviously once we've once I've got it layered up and I've got the right thickness I can then lay this profile on the top so trace that as well and lay that on the top just to help me shape it basically so yeah first job's going to be to uh, to get this traced out uh, and so I can stick it on the side of some bolts there. So um, I'll get that traced uh, and then I'll get dig the bolts out that I need and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so this is what I've got. Um, so I've traced around some paper and stuck that on there. So this is kind of my main one, if you like, that I'm shaping everything to. Uh, and then I've just cut these pretty roughly out of the scrap quarter inch bolts there. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is square them all up at the back like that uh, and then glue these together i'm going to use some pva wood glue again because it's a bit easier to sand than uh, just pouring ca into all that lot i don't think it'd be uh, the, the best thing to do so i'm going to get that glued up and then clamp it down with my clamp might cut off. yeah i've only got the one clamp actually uh, but yeah i'll clamp it all down anyway maybe tape it up um, and then leave that to dry overnight again. Um, and then next clip will be, uh, obviously we've got to stick this on and then we've got to start shaping. All right then, it's been a few days since the last clip. Um, I think in the last episode I was just getting this, uh, sorry, not the last episode, the last clip, I was just getting this nose cone um, very roughly cut out and the bit stuck together. Um, I've taken all the tape off this. So this is looking, you know, nice and strong now, really strong in fact, now all the glue's dried. Um, so this uh, next section really is all about shaping it. So it's gonna be a lot of cutting, a lot of sanding, a lot of razor planing. Certainly with this nose cone, we've got to do loads of sanding with that. Um, but the first job is going to be to, um, I'm just going to square the rear of the fuselage off with my uh, nice big permagrit block. It's almost there anyway, the way I've uh, positioned these sheets, so there's not much to do there. So we'll get with that, we'll start with that, and then once I've done that, I've got to trim these down. I think I'll initially tr trim them down with my um, knife just to cut this excess off. Same at the front here. Got a couple of lips at the front, so I'm gonna cut these off. I'll get this side done first, I think, with a knife, and then probably go at this one with a razor plane might be easier. Uh, yeah, and then um, carve into it, cut all the excess off, then we can get the razor plane onto it and start shaping it, and then, of course, finally, we'll sand it. So it's gonna be a bit of a messy job, I think, but um, and probably take quite a while, uh, but we may as well get stuck in.
Okay, that's the first bit of uh, planing done. So basically all I've done, you know, I've already created all this and that's just from getting this top sheet smooth with the sides of the fuselage. But at least it's a lot easier to work with now. You can also see that I've stuck the nose cone, or not nose cone, the nose on, which at the minute looks pretty horrendous. Uh, I'm just hoping that that will shape down quite nicely. What I have noticed, it kind of comes out at the front and the, that's I think just the way the bolts is um, when it's been drying um, although I did have it clamped up but it does taper down obviously quite sharp anyway at the front so I don't think that's going to be a problem but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes if it looks a total mess what I might have to do is um, just take it off and maybe get some some bolts of block but um, we'll go with it for now and see how we get on with it so the next step now then is to really sort of get into this, well first of all clear this mess up of course, um, but really get into this uh, shaping exercise and, and according to the plan you actually shape this right through to those um, triangle that we, that we put inside the fuselage so you, you can almost see the triangle. It's got to be almost like a round shape um, so it really is going to take a lot of shaping. But that is the next bit I need to crack on with. So this, yeah, just looking at the fact, let me show you the plan so you can see what I'm talking about. So here you can see this is the profile from the front. You can see here that they've literally shaped it right through to the triangle section. In fact, they've taken a fair bit of the triangle section off as well. Um, so it really is going to be uh, quite a thing to to get it shaped like that, but uh, we'll give it a good go. The other thing I need to do as well is just cut this, well, um, trace that and cut that out and stick that on top of here and draw around it um, so I can get the profile of the nose correct. So I will get all those bits done and then I will come back to you. Hopefully when I come back you'll see that it's a bit more um, of a nicer shape. Well, there we are. I've got to say, I was a little bit nervous about doing that. Um, it's probably taken me about 40 minutes, something like that, to get it shaped up. Um, and when you look at the plan you think, ah, oh, it's going to take ages to do that. It looks nothing like, you know, it's completely square and the planet's pretty much round. Um, but you forget how nice Bolzer is. It really is a nice material to work with if you've never worked with it before. Um, it just sands so easily and you can so quickly get things into shape. So I'm really pleased with the way this has gone. Particularly, as I've said, you know, this is the first time I've got back into building a Bolzer model for many, many years. Um, so, you know, you forget how to work with it and stuff like that but as you can see there I've even shaped the nose and I think I've pretty much got it you know it's quite symmetrical it needs a bit of filler um, so I've got this model like filler which uh, I remember this from when I back in the days when I used to do bolts and models um, you, this was the stuff the deluxe materials model like we used to use so it needs that kind of all over it really there's a few little blemishes so I'll fill it there fill it well, all, all all round, and just just carry on, just shaping that, get it absolutely spot on. And then there's a couple of other little bits, like there's a gap um, along here between the side. This is this is the fuselage side. I had to cut out myself, uh, and I've you know not quite cut it accurately just along here, but that was absolutely fine because I've just fill fill that with the model light, sand it off, and you won't even know that it's there. And then there's a couple of holes where I put the pins in and bits and bobs like that so get all that done but you can see here I think you can just about see there let me see on the camera sometimes it's difficult to tell maybe you can't but um, let's have a look see if we can just get that focus for you um, you can see there that I have taken it right down to the triangle underneath because you can see the cuts in the triangle I think you can just about make that out um, so what I did was I got the plane, champs, kind of chamfered the edges off, then sanded it and then I thought, you know what, this is nothing like they say on the instructions and on the plan. 
I mean, on the plan, uh, on the instructions, he, um, Tony says, make sure you've got a brand new blade in your razor plane because you're going to be doing, you know, don't be shy with the razor plane. So I went, <coughs> after I'd sanded it, I thought, I'm not being, uh, you know, I'm being too nervous. So just go back in with the razor plane and, and, and go for it. So I went back in and cut cut these uh, corners right down till I could just about start to see the uh, triangle coming through, which is exactly what it says to do on the plan, really. But that essentially is now the main fuselage done and shaped. So next thing I've got to move on to now is is cutting the side pods out, which are quite big side pods on this, uh, and they 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 chamfer right back into nothing at the back here so and they obviously stick out where do they stick out probably let's have a quick look i'm just looking at the plan here they probably come right down to here i don't know whether you can see that i keep doing this yeah you can <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the bolts are just everywhere i should really have put a mask on to manage they did say i was going to put a mask on to myself the other day and i, I forgot i did do some of it outside actually it was getting so dusty um, so yeah, side pods next, um, but that's going to be in the next episode, which is going to be part five. So look out for that. Um, if you have watched it all the way to the end, um, then I, I really appreciate you uh, following along, and I hope you're enjoying it. Um, and as I said at the start, if you've not subscribed and you're into fixed wing RC and Boltzer, or you know you just enjoy watching people make stuff, then um, you're going to want to subscribe to my channel basically it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe also do edfs as this is but foam edfs as well um nitro uh, and i also do um i quite like the fpv wings so i've got quite a few of those that i uh, i've still got a couple of those ready to build as well um so I kind of get involved in all sorts of stuff what i am moving away from um both personally as the hobby and the channel is is kind of moving away from prop driven foam aircraft because um i've kind of just sort of had my fun with them and, and really my passion lies in the bolts and stuff so yeah if that's what you're into then uh, as i say give me a subscribe if you've enjoyed the video then it really helps me out if you just hit that like button um that helps me out with um with youtube and uh, if you want to be notified when the next one comes up then hit the notify button and if you've got any comments or anything like that stick them in the comments box i always get back to people i'm not at the stage yet where I'm getting thousands of comments um, so I can't respond to them so I do personally respond to all of them appreciate you watching and of course to everyone who has subscribed um, I really do appreciate your support we're starting to build a bit of momentum now I think um, you know I'm not far off a thousand users uh, a thousand users a thousand um, subscribers <laughs> my day job uh, coming out there um <clears throat> so yeah um you know that's what i'm working towards and anyway that's enough of me waffling so um yeah see you soon for part five cheers everyone <laughs>